Hello, my name is Ziad Pierre. I'm a certified physician assistant practicing in Miami, Florida. I specialize in cardiac electrophysiology and I've been working for three years now. During that time, I've inserted over 300 insertable cardiac monitors, and today it's my pleasure to welcome you to this presentation on Medtronic's Reveal Link ICM. The Medtronic Reveal Link is about a matchstick in length and two credit cards thick. The battery life is indicated for three years, and it is MRI compatible with 1.5 and 3T. There's no wait time necessary after the insertion for an MRI. The device is broadly indicated for cryptogenic stroke, syncope, and atrial fibrillation patients. In preparation for the insertion, as a clinician, I want to make sure the patient feels comfortable and reassured. I review their chest wall anatomy to make sure there are no anomalies that may change the insertion technique. I review their home medication so I have an understanding if they're at elevated risk of bleeding. I explain every step of the process with them so they feel comfortable. And after the procedure, my team and I provide them with resources, education, and answer any questions they have to ensure that we receive transmissions with our home monitor. In preparation for the insertion, we want to gather our materials and set up our sterile field, beginning with the adhesive tape that will be placed on the table. On our sterile field, we're going to place the following sterile equipment, beginning with the size 7 gloves, which is my preferred size. I'd recommend wearing something that's comfortable for you. Alongside your gloves, you're going to use a sterile gown, also to be open and placed on the sterile field. Next, we'll use chloroprep, which we'll use to sterilize the skin. An ideal product that you can order to ensure a smooth workflow that includes all of the material necessary, including your needles and syringes, is the link kit. Otherwise, you'll have to gather these materials individually. And of course, we have the sterile package insertion kit, which includes a puncture tool, which we'll use to make an incision on the skin. You have a preloaded reveal link in the chamber with a tunneling end, alongside a plunger tool, which we'll use to insert into the patient. In anticipation of your closure technique, you want to have the appropriate materials ready. I like to use Dermabond for the majority of my patients. However, you can also use Steri strips, sutures, or any other technique you prefer. To optimize workflow of a Reveal Link ICM insertion, you can set up the patient's demographic up to seven days prior to the implant date. This ensures a smooth insertion and avoid intraoperative delays. We've arrived to the minor procedure room in preparation for the Medtronic Reveal Link insertion procedure. Our patient is resting comfortably on the stretcher. I am standing to their right. Their head is to my left and their feet are to my right. We have exposed the chest in preparation for the skin chloroprep. I'm going to find the left chest area and I'm going to crack the chloroprep and begin small circles to big circles to prepare the skin. We're going to repeat this process one more time. Crack it, small circles to big circles in the left chest area. And we're going to allow that to dry over the next three minutes. While we're waiting for the chloroprep to dry, I'm going to prepare my 2% lidocaine with epinephrine. I like 2% because it's optimal for patient comfort, and I like epinephrine because it really controls those capillary bleeds to keep this procedure as smooth as possible. I recommend using 10cc, no more, as this is the optimal volume for patient comfort covering the pocket, and also not overdoing it as to affect the R waves. While we're waiting for the chloroprep to continue drying, I'm gonna apply four sterile towels on the left chest area as part of our sterile technique. For the demonstration, I'm going to remove these so you can better visualize the insertion technique later on. Now that the chloroprep has dry, we can begin. I'm going to grab my lidocaine with a 25 gauge needle and I'm going to find the midline of my patient 
I'm going to go two centimeters to the left at the left peristonal line, and I'm going to palpate down to the fourth intercostal space. Once there, I'm going to visualize a 45 degree angle, which is gonna be my ideal insertion of the ICM. I'm going to go ahead and tell the patient they're gonna feel a little poke, and I find patient tolerate this better if I inject the needle as they're exhaling. So I'm gonna ask them to take a deep breath in, and as they're letting it out, I'm going to puncture the skin. I'm going to aspirate to make sure I'm in no blood vessel, and I'm going to inject the lidocaine slowly. Slowly advancing my needle in that 45 degree angle. There's no reason to rush here. Patients tolerate this better if you inject it slowly. And I'm gonna cover a couple of degrees above and below that 45 degrees in case the ICM is deployed slightly off angle, our patient will still be comfortable. I'm going to go ahead and remove the needle and I'm gonna make another incision to cover where we're going to use the puncture tool. So once again, take a deep breath in and let it out. I'm gonna make the puncture and I'm going to go ahead and aspirate to make sure we're not in a blood vessel and I'm going to inject the remaining lidocaine to cover the incision. At this point, the area should be raised because we're keeping this in the subcutaneous space and as you can see, my needle is resting relatively parallel to the surface area of the patient's body. We're going to allow that to absorb over the next one to two minutes. Next, I'm going to use my puncture tool and I'm going to touch the patient on the right side of their chest where I haven't applied any lidocaine. They should feel a sharp sensation there and I'm going to compare that to the left side of the chest where I'm going to make my incision. They should feel a very subtle sensation, if anything at all. You can always inject a couple more cc's of lidocaine for patient comfort, but my patient says they feel fine. We're going to go ahead and proceed. With my left hand, I'm going to pinch the skin raise it, and with my right hand, making sure that my fingers are not in the way, I'm going to use the puncture tool to make my incision. I recommend using this tool and not a scalpel as this was designed to be the perfect length and width for this procedure. I'm gonna tell my patient you're gonna feel a little bit of pressure. I'm gonna push all the way in, and the insertion tool stops the blade from going any further. Now I'm going to remove this. I'm going to grab my insertion tool that includes a Medtronic reveal link already preloaded. Aiming at a 45 degree angle, I'm going to slowly insert this. I'm keeping this tool relatively flat and parallel to the patient's body. Once I'm all the way, I'm going to flip this 180 degrees, keeping it flat, and now I'm at a depth of about eight millimeters. Using the plunger, I'm going to insert it into the chamber and I'm going to provide forward pressure with my right index finger and thumb and with my left hand, I'm going to push the plunger, thus inserting the Medtronic reveal link into the pocket completely until I hear a click. I'm now going to take a four by four provide pressure and with my left hand I will remove both tools at the same time. As you can see, the Mutronic Reveal Link has been inserted approximately 10 millimeters away from the incision, so you can be reassured that the device will not pop out easily. I'm going to hold pressure here for a moment to ensure bleeding is controlled. Prior to closing the incision, I'm going to apply a sterile towel on the patient's chest and a team member will apply the Medtronic reader head onto the patient's chest to ensure the R waves are above 0.2 millivolts. I'm told the R waves look good, and if needed, you can always inject one cc of lidocaine with epinephrine on the surface to control any bleeding. You want to make sure the bleeding is completely controlled before applying Dermabon, which is my preferred closing technique. The bleeding appears controlled. I'm gonna go ahead and crack my Dermabon and put a few drops inside the incision. I'm going to pinch the skin to make sure that inner layer of the skin is approximated. Now I'm gonna apply another layer of Dermabon above on the surface layer and allow that to dry over the next few minutes. And as you can see, we've completed the Medtronic Reveal Link insertion and the patient is still smiling. 
If the Medtronic Reveal Link device is suboptimally positioned, a reposition may be necessary. To do so, you can use a grasp tool of your choice to gently remove the device from the patient and realign the words Medtronic upright, both on the Medtronic Reveal Link and on the insertion tool, insert it into the chamber and push it gently until you hear a click. Now the device can be reinserted. When you open the Medtronic Reveal Link Mobile Manager app, the Reveal Link Mobile Manager has three main tiles, set up patient, insert device, and check patient. You're able to set up the patient up to seven days prior to the insertion date. Let's go ahead and do that now. Doing this ahead of time optimizes the workflow and prevents intraoperative delays. When filling out the patient demographics, the best practice is to complete all of the fields on the screen, including the ones that are labeled as optional. This will ensure a smooth registration of the patient into the CareLink network. Now that we've completed all of the fields, we can save this information for later and retrieve it on the insertion date. We've arrived on the day of insertion. We're going to click insert device. And as you can see, our preloaded information from prior will be located here. We can select it and hit continue. Next, you'll be prompted to associate the device with a patient. To do so, you can hit scan code and using the camera of the tablet, you can locate the QR code on the back of the Medtronic Reveal Link packaging. After connecting the device, the next step will be to associate the MyCareLink home monitor with the patient. This can be done by using the tablet camera and scanning the monitoring packaging. Doing this will allow for the home monitor to send data from the Reveal Link to the CareLink network from the comfort of the patient's home. The following information including patient's reason for monitoring, follow-up clinic, an implanting physician can be added after associating the monitor. Each reason for monitoring has specific nominal programmable settings. These nominal settings can be changed on the device and the patient setting tab after R waves are confirmed. To ensure desired device sensing, the R waves should be ideally 0.2 millivolts or above. This can be seen and confirmed on the Medtronic Reveal Link Mobile Manager. After ensuring the Medtronic Reveal Link, is programmed appropriately for the patient and the all waves are satisfactory, clicking end session will complete the workflow. To ensure that the patient's data can be viewed by the clinic staff, it is important for the clinic to accept the patient into the CareLink network from the new patient list as quickly as possible. Doing so will also allow care alerts to be transmitted to the clinic. Care alerts can be customized based on individual patients. This can be done by clicking on a specific patient in the CareLink network and navigating to the CareLink notification tab. After changing any care alert settings, be sure to click save. The reveal link sends data to the CareLink network via the patient's My CareLink home monitor. The CareLink network then generates three types of reports. The different types of reports are the event report, the summary report with Cardiac Compass, and the full report. Clinic staff can view each of the report on the CareLink network by clicking on the patient's name.